Hi, I'm Charlotte Louise from Clungy.com, and today I'm going to do another basic momentum problem. Um, so there are a few different forms that teachers like to give momentum problems in, so I'm just sort of trying to cover the basics. Um, one of the big ones that I've seen a lot is this form where you have a bullet hitting a block and the two of them go off together. Um, so this obviously is just a one-dimensional problem if we look at it sort of within something. We don't really have anything going on in the Y. So um, in this case, it's just one dimension, which means that we can just say that the momentum initially is equal to the momentum finally. Um, and here, the really key thing to recognize is um, that initially we have two different objects, and finally we just have one object. So initially we have the mass of the bullet and whatever velocity it's traveling at. And because that's going to be what's moving, um, that's going to have some velocity that you're probably going to be given. So that's going to be the velocity of the bullet. Um, and I'm going to call the bullet little b because it's little, and the block I'm going to use the scrub subscript big b. So that's going to be plus the momentum of the block, so m b. And most likely your block is just going to be sitting there when you're shooting at something. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that velocity of big b in as zero, which means that this whole term is going to cancel. And that's going to be equal to our momentum final. So these two are most likely going to hit, and the bullet is going to cause the block to topple over or move some way. And so here we're just saying that it just causes, they go off together. So that mass finally is going to be the bullet plus the mass of the block. Um, and that's really key there too. And then it's going to be the final velocity. Um, so here, most likely, you're going to know the velocity of the bullet to start, and you're going to have all these masses, so it's really easy to just solve for the final velocity in that case, because it's going to be equal to the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet over the mass of the bullet plus the ball. Now, occasionally, um, when you, your teacher is getting a little bit more fancy in a test or something, you're going to be given something like, then the block goes this far, and you're going to have to solve backwards for the velocity of the bullet. But using this equation right here, and I'm going to record in blue, you can go backwards or forwards. If you know the velocity final, and keep in mind, this is right after the collision occurs. So I drew this happening over here, but really, when we're looking at collisions and momentum, we're talking pretty much instantaneous. So not necessarily the velocity way down here, especially if you have some sort of force acting here. You could have it on a plane with friction. Um, this velocity down here in that case is not going to be equal to this velocity. So we're talking right away. But once you know the velocity right after the two collide and go off together, then you can also very easily solve for the velocity of the bullet. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind that you can go backwards or forwards with this. But um, this is a pretty common problem, and hopefully this has helped you to understand it.